Rock Pat here. Hi right, guys, it's another day in the jungle. And today I got something I've been wanting to get for quite some time. Uh, this is a 19... Well, the guy I bought it from says his father bought it brand new in 1948 or 49. Uh, it is a Logan lathe. It is a Model 200. Uh, I looked it up online and it sold brand new for $225 with the stand, $200 without the stand. Uh, it cuts threads. It, uh, it pretty much does everything. Uh, it's, I was going to say it's equivalent to the Craftsman type uh, lathe. Uh, but let's see what I can do. I have been whittling down on this. This is actually a piece of... of three-quarter inch all thread galvanized all thread and I have just been whittling down on it you can see right here the threads in the chuck uh, so let's cut make a cut and then we'll go over and see what I got here this isn't the best cutter uh, it's what was in with everything else so uh, you know it's not making the best cut in the world but it's cutting, it's cut it down. And I can always order new. Uh, I'm going to order a uh, quick change setup for it and some new cutters. And we should be in business. The only other thing I need to order for it is a uh, live center for the tailstock. Uh, I thought I saw in the picture that it was there, but it wasn't. The lathe came with a three jaw and a four jaw chuck and two uh, drill chucks for the uh, tailstock and a bunch of these old school cutter things. But like I said, I'm going to change this out to a quick change. But yeah, it's cutting. Uh, a fresh blade on it might do better. Uh, I don't know but this is a one owner machine and it is in exceptional shape so let me get you guys off of here and let's take a look at it bear with me y'all gonna get a shook up a little bit all right so here is my new old school machine uh, the old cast iron legs i've got all the gears that come with it for the threading oh i can't really open it i got a piece of all thread in there but uh man i looked at all the gears and man they are sharp the ways man they are in exceptional shape uh i mean they're still sharp on the edges and i don't see any wear in it the graduations are all nice and sharp on everything it the guy that had that bought it brand new on the printing company and so it's never been used for production work or anything like that uh, it's as good as a brand new machine as you can get uh, I don't know what else to say about it other than it's in really good shape and it's about the size that I need and wanted uh, It'll do everything I need it to do for now. If I need something bigger in the in the future, well, then we'll get something larger in the future. Uh, the cool thing about this one is it runs on uh, single phase 110. That is a helpful deal uh, because uh, most of the lathes that are for sale that are out there on the Craigslist and wherever else are three phase, and you can get them cheap. But you got to deal with three phase, and you've got to deal with uh, that they're usually 15 to 20 foot long for the price you know that they can get. I mean, it seems like the bigger they are, the cheaper they are. I paid $1,260 for this lathe, and I think I got every bit of my money's worth. Uh, like I said, the the screw is like sharp as can be. Uh, the ways they're just so clean uh i mean when i say they're clean they, they could use a bath but as far as you know there's no there's no slop in anything everything's tight including all the wheels i mean just tight as can be 
So I'm really pleased with it. Uh, now when I need to make something, I don't have to go over to my buddy's place to do it. I can do it here in shop. And you know how that is. That's always a good thing when you can do something in shop and all. But there's your Chicago, Illinois, United States of America. When you know you see the city name and the, and the state name and the USA on it, that's old school quality right there, boys. Model 200. Uh, Y'all can look it up. I saw that, like I said, this thing sold for $225 with the stand when it was brand new. If you didn't want the stand and you wanted the bench top, it was $200 even. Uh, it's got forward, reverse, turn it backwards, turn it forward. Uh, like, came with another four jaw in case we need to do something with square stock. Uh, the only thing it didn't, it came with a dead center, but it didn't come with a live center, which I thought I saw a live center in the, uh, in the picture when I looked at it on Craigslist, but that disappeared on me. Uh, I'll have to buy one. Now, one of the things I don't understand is this, uh, what the hell you call this? A, uh, Damn it, right on the tip of my tongue. Okay, y'all say it for me quick. One, go. Uh, anyway, I thought these things were supposed to have bearings in them. I don't understand this not having any kind of bearing in it. Uh, I mean, is that supposed to ride like on steady rest? That's what it is. Is that supposed to ride like right on the material or, or what? I mean, it seems like it's not... That there should be bearings inside of that to ride on the material. Um... Uh, and I know I got this hanging way out in the wind, and if I had a uh, live center, I would definitely be having the live center up in the tail end of this, and I would probably get better cuts than what I'm getting. But, I'm just playing and everything. Got a new tool, so now I got a semi-machine shop. Got my mill right there, which I did use the other day when I made my steering, uh, cut my steering shaft for my, uh, 54 Bel Air so I could make double D's on the end of that shaft to put a double D uh, U-joint on it. And had I had this, I wouldn't have had to go over and borrowed my buddy's lathe because I had to take a piece of that. The bearing would fit inside for the shaft and then I had to whittle it down so it would fit inside of the old steering uh, steering column shaft because uh, remember this went into an actual uh, that went into an actual uh, gearbox so it had to be lobbed off and had to save it so I'll take you out here real quick and show you the show you the semi finished product on the 54 you gotta hang on there y'all gotta go for a ride Woo! so anyway i finally after all this time got some steering on this thing but that red piece i had to go over to my buddies and use a lathe on and uh and everything but finally got steering hooked up now it may not be the final iteration but i wanted to hook something up because i was tired of pushing this in and out of the garage turning the wheels by hand and look what else we got here. Uh, this came in. I got to rewire this for a guy. Uh, this is a 1960 Bel Air. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Impala. Not a Bel Air, Impala. And I'm going to be doing a total rewire on it and fixing some other problems with her and everything. But there you have it, guys. Rocking and a rolling and a rolling and a rocking. And now we can cut metal, turn it down to what we need to. So just remember. Keep rocking in the USA. Talk to y'all next time.